My long-suffering family and friends will attest that I'm a pretty big nerd when it comes to the Lord of the Rings, so I thought it was about time for a Tolkien build. Hey guys, welcome to Felting Fandom. My name is Kari, and I like to needle felt all kinds of geeky things. Today, I'll show you how I made this tiny hobbit hole in a teacup. I started off with gluing some polyfill in the cup because I'm cheap and I don't want to use wool if I don't have to. Once that was felted down, I started layering core wool to finish filling up the cup and start shaping the hill. Once I was happy with the shape and firmness, I covered everything in a couple of layers of grass green wool. I marked out where I would add details like stairs, the door, and the windows. Next, I started filling in the road that goes ever on and on, or for about 4 centimeters in this case. And I added in a garden path to help Sam with his eavesdropping. I ain't been dropping no eaves, sir, honest. Next are two staircases made with some dark grey wool. One leads to the front door, and the other leads to nothing. I added in Beg Ann's facade, all while keeping up the facade that I have a clue what I'm doing on YouTube. Oh, I get it. Then, I started adding in all of the walls where the windows will go. At this point, you've likely realized that this is not an accurate scale model of Bag End. I did loosely base this model off of the Weta model, but no complaining about the many inaccuracies, because it was just a bit of fun. I added details to the windows. All of the windows have wooden support beams above them, and they're made with a combination of wood and stone details. Adding in the window frames was the most difficult because I could only use a few individual strands of wool. It got very frustrating at times. Milbo's door has a couple of windows on either side. Then I blended a few different wools to get the right color for the door, and I added a teeny tiny doorknob to the very center. There's a few more windows that go around the back of the hill, and then a big set of windows that goes in the front. Then I added in some chimneys, and some teeny tiny chimney pots that were very dangerous for my fingertips. To make the tree trunk, I twisted together some pipe cleaners, or pipey wipies as we call them in Australia, and attached branches of various lengths. I then wrapped the trunk and branches in a thin layer of brown wool and felted it into place. Attach the tree to the base, add a bit of green wool, and you're golden! I blended some green and yellow wools and started felting some loose balls and attaching those to the branches. It's going to look super weird and ugly for a while, but you got to trust the process. That's looking a bit better. I added wool that had more yellow blended in at the top of the tree and had a darker blend for the lower branches for a bit of highlighting. And it's time for a bit of a trim, but not too much. Tree goatee just doesn't have the same ring as tree beard. And I forgot to add in the roots, so I'll hastily felt in some of those. Don't be hasty. Next, I'll simply make a minuscule bench. Wrong. One does not simply make a tiny bench. Its mini planks are impossible to fashion. You can give up any hope of sleep, and your fingertips will be ever painful. Basically, this took forever, and I stabbed myself a couple of times. I was on the fence about it, but I'll quickly show you how I made the fence. I loosely felted two sections of a wall, then made a bunch of small planks in a darker brown wool and attached a bunch of loads. Then the all-important gate to keep out everyone except those on party business and very old friends. After making the posts, I added some white wool to make the sign. Unfortunately, the scale of this project is too small to felt the letters, so you'll have to accept my random scribbles instead. And next, a chance for Samwise the gardener to show his quality. Let's add in teeny plants and flowers all over the place. I tried to add a variety of colors and shapes, and the second staircase now becomes a shortcut to mushrooms. I added in a bunch of ivy and decided I needed a barrel, you know, 
just in case of emergency barrel riding situations. Or maybe it's just full of potatoes. Let's put it over here. And how about I let you enjoy a little more foliage, free from my lame jokes and ramblings. Give them a moment, for pity's sake! And with that, we're done! This was my first real attempt at a micro felted piece, and I'm pretty happy with the level of detail I was able to achieve on something so small. If you'd like to see more micro felted work or the habitual Lord of the Rings project, please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell. It helps me grow this little channel. Thanks so much for watching, and let me know in the comments what geeky project would you like to see next. Bye!